Hi everyone, my name is Dunda Singh Khan and my teammate is Vivek Kumar. This is our first Android Studio tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to show you how to parse the JSON data using Wally library and uh, we're going to use the async task for background processing so that we don't block the main thread. So let's start. <laughs> So this is our activity main.xml file and uh, this is our manifest file and uh, in this we need to add the internet permission because uh, we're gonna pass the JSON data from internet so we must take the permission first and uh, we also need to add the dependencies for the volley library and I will give the I will give this in the description you can check it from there and we're gonna click on sync now this will add the dependencies for the volley library and now let's go to activity main.xml file where we're gonna give the design so this is in the constant layout let's change the layout first into linear layout you can give you choose any layer, layer, layout you want you know so I'm converting into linear layout and I'm adding the orientation vertical in the text view I'm gonna give some size and let's just give it 20 dp I'm gonna give it the match parent and uh, give him some height. You can choose any height you want. And uh, let's create the button. So uh, when we're gonna click on this button, it will fetch the data from internet and gonna display in the text view. So let's give it height uh, wrap content. Give it the text. Start. And uh, we're gonna give some gravity center so this can so that uh, it should be lined at the center let's create the on click method start async uh, task so this method uh, we need to get the method with the this name so we'll click on the red sign and uh, create start on async method so this method will, will be automatically created in the main activity when we're gonna click on that uh, red dot as you can see So now let's uh, assign for assigning the text view. Firstly, we need to create uh, a text view with the name uh, text. We can give it any name we want. I'm gonna give it a display text semicolon, and uh, I'm gonna create the request queue private request queue, and I'm gonna give it a variable name a queue semicolon and uh, I'm gonna create a, a, pro, a progress dialog bar which will be displayed when we're gonna click on the button so it will be displayed for uh, some second as it gonna fetch the data behind uh, like in the background from internet so this progress bar will be displayed on the screen dialog okay. now we need to assign them uh, by finding by id so we're gonna uh, firstly we're gonna assign like dialog equal to new progress dialog and here in the context we're gonna give the main activity dot this and uh, semicolon we're gonna display text equal to text view we are passing into text view we're gonna find view by id r dot id dot here we need to give the ID of the text view. Let's go to activity main.xml file. We haven't provided the ID, so we're gonna give the ID with any name we want. Let, uh, I won't give, I'm gonna give the name text view one one two. Let's see. It's up to us. So I'm gonna here we need to write r dot id dot text view one two and semicolon. And uh, so we have assigned the values. Now we're gonna set movement method to new scrolling uh, new scrolling movement method. So whenever we're gonna have, uh, add the data into text view, it will be in the scroll scrollable view. That's a uh, queue. Assign the queue equal to volley dot new request queue. And here we need to pass the context. So we're gonna pass this semicolon. So we already get to the queue, guys. 
now uh, in this method start in async task we need to to implement this async task at the background so let's create a new private class private class we can give it any name we want I'm gonna give it the name uh, let's say demo async task and we need to extend the this by async task here we're gonna give the three parameters first parameter will be going to do in background process method which will run at the background let's give it a string the second method will be the progress method which gonna run on the main thread we can give it any any type we want which we're gonna use integer and the third will be the result process which will be the on post execute method which will be run on the main thread too so while we're extending this class we need to override some methods let's click on the red dot sign and then implement methods here we need to must implement doing background method because this is a, the mandatory method to implement if we are extending the async task here we can also override some other methods let's say if you want to override on pre on post and on progress something so this method we can override I'm gonna override on pre and on post secondary methods so these I'm gonna override these three methods let me put this at the top so on pre execute method will be run on the main thread as well as on post execute method run on the main thread while only the doing background method will run at the background so in the on pre execute method I'm gonna display that uh, dialog let me set the message first set message and here we're gonna give the message which will be displayed in the, on the dialog bar waiting wait doing something we're gonna display this string and we need to set it to show dialog dot show semicolon now we're gonna create the JSON uh, we're gonna create the JSON URL from which we're gonna fetch the data let's create a new string with the JSON URL string name it as JSON URL equal to here we need to uh, provide the URL from which we're gonna fetch the data so let's go to the website myjson.com and here we can uh, provide our JSON file or you can say JSON sample data and it will, it, it will create the JSON uh, URL from which we can fetch that data. So I created some sample uh, data for you guys. So it has uh, this whole is a JSON object as uh, it is written by curly braces. And inside them, there are key value pairs. So uh, this is the value, of the first key, and uh, it is whole as an array. And inside the array, there are different JSON objects separated by commas, as you can see. And inside the each JSON object there are two different strings named as the key value pairs as key as name and jobs and value they have different values so this URL is created and we're gonna use this URL to pass the JSON data let's copy this URL and uh, go to the main activity here we go add the URL now let's go to the doing background method which will run at the background here we're gonna return the string which will go to the on post execute method. So after the all the process finish, we're gonna display process finish this string. Now we need to write the code which is gonna fetch the data from internet. So let's create the JSON object request. We're gonna request name a variable as new equal to JSON object request. Here we need to pass the five variables. So, so the first one will be the request queue. Request, uh, sorry, request dot get method. Request dot method dot get. The second will be the URL which we need to pass, which will be the string as it is provided in the doing background parameter string zero because we are only providing the one string. The third parameter we can give null, and the fourth one will be the response listener new response dot listener. Here we need to write the code. And the fifth and the last parameter will be the response error listener so if, if the data doesn't exist or there is some other kind of error so this uh, function this function will handle this parameter will handle it error dot print check phrase so let's go to on response method 
here we need to write the code so we know it's, it is a whole as a json object as you can see and the company is a, a key name so let's create that and the value is in the uh, array as you can see so json array JSON array we can uh, give the variable name anyway JSON let's say JSON array equal to request of response dot get JSON array here we're gonna provide the string name which is company as a name of the key pair over there so it displays a red we're gonna click here surrounded with the try and get block if there is an error it will be will not crash the app application so we're gonna write uh, all the code inside this try block now we need to move through all these json objects which are separated by commas inside the json array so for that we're gonna use the for loop let's name the variable integer count equal to zero count less than json array dot length let's increment the count So inside the JSON array, there are different JSON objects. So we're gonna handle this by JSON object equal to a company. Let's give it a variable name companies equal to JSON array dot get JSON object. And here we're gonna provide the index which will be the count semicolon. Now inside this JSON object, there are two strings having key value pairs name and other reason. Here you can see jobs. Yep. So let's create the first variable string name equal to companies companies dot get string name semicolon and the other string will be the jobs you can this is just the name of the variable companies dot get string jobs semicolon so both of the string will be saved in these two variables now we're gonna append these two variables into the text view so we're gonna get display text dot append let's give it or something good let's write them in a string format like this name column space plus name variable plus jobs let's do the next line jobs column space plus jobs So whole data will be appended in the display x with the help of for loop. Jobs next line. So now as you can see we are appending everything into the text view. So as it is a scrollable so it will be in the scrollable view. Now we are gonna add this uh, request into the queue. Let's go to the bottom firstly uh, okay here is a red dot somewhere yep so we need to type here semicolon and we're gonna pass this request into the queue queue dot add request semicolon so the whole data will be this code will uh, fetch the data from the internet using volley library so now we move to the on post execute method and the returned string from the uh, doing background method will go into the on post execute so we want to display this string i'm going to display this in a toast message and we also need to close the dialog box so 
let's firstly display the toast message toast dot make text we need to first variable we need to pass as the context main activity of this second will be the text which is the string return from the background method third will be toast dot length short dot show <coughs> And we also need to dismiss the dialog box uh, once the whole method is finished. Dialog dot dismiss. So we get the whole code, guys. So with the help of this, we are uh, fetching the data from internet, and uh, we are all doing this uh, fetching in the background process. We don't block the main thread, and our application not gonna freeze for some seconds as we're gonna fetch the data from internet. So uh, as our data is not uh, too long, so we need to slow down our process a little bit so that we can uh, see our dialog box. Let's slow down the process by writing thread.sleep. So we are slowing it by 500 milliseconds. We're going to sound it with the try and catch block. <coughs> so this is our whole code, guys. On pre-execute method, we're going to display the dialog box. Doing background method passing the JSON data adding it to a queue on post execute method dismissing the dialog and displaying a toast message so now we're gonna try to run the application let's go over there and try to run let me connect my phone to the PC oh, wait guys I think we forgot something uh, yeah we gonna forget something let's go to the start uh, async task method because uh, whenever we're gonna click on a button this method will run and we created the class but we have but we haven't created the object so firstly we also need to create the object let's create the object for the demo async task demo async task we're gonna give the variable name task equal to new demo async task and we're gonna execute Task dot execute. Here we need to provide the JSON URL which we have created at the top. JSON URL semicolon. It's installing now. As you can see, there is no button, so let's uh, lower down the height a little bit so that we can see the button. Let's change it to 300 dp. And now we, I also don't want to display this text hello world because we are appending in the text view. Now let's try to run the application again. So now we can see, let's click on the start button. And as we can see the dialog box and the whole data is fetched from the internet. So this is the way uh, through which we can pass the JSON data from internet using Wally library. and. Uh, we also use the async task so that we don't block the main thread which is gonna provide us like which is not gonna let the application freeze okay bye guys